This example comes out of section 6.3, proving identity. In this question, we're asked to prove uh, this identity. 1 over 1 plus sine x equals secant x minus sine x secant x over cos x. Looks like a lot to deal with. Let's start with the first things first. Set up our left side, right side table. And keep our left side away from our right side. So let's put the left side of this equation here. And secant x minus sine x secant x over cos x on the right. Notice I haven't changed anything in the first step, and that's a good uh, tip for you, is don't start simplifying things in your head before you start writing things down. On the right side, um, I definitely see something that factors. I can factor out a secant x out of the numerator, leaving me with 1 minus sine x, all that still over cosine x. Now, that doesn't yet look like the left side, but it does pose an interesting idea, which is I have 1 plus sine x on the left, and I have 1 minus sine x on the right. This uh, springs up the idea of conjugates, which was the sixth uh, hint for proving I gave you before. So let's, before I get that far, let's do 1 over cos x times 1 minus sine x, all that over cos x. A uh, fraction divided by something means that this ends up being 1 minus sine x over cosine squared x. The extra cosine ends up down there. But we still have 1 plus sine x on the left. This is where I'm going to take my 1 over 1 plus sine x. I'm going to multiply it by the conjugate. And I need to do it on both the top and the bottom. The conjugate being 1 minus sine x. And because I'm doing it top and bottom, I'm not breaking any laws. Basically, exactly what I'm doing is multiplying by 1. Let's see what happens. The top just becomes 1 minus sine x. The bottom becomes 1 minus sine squared x, the difference of squared. 1 minus sine x times 1 plus sine x. You can foil it out if you like. But you end up with 1 minus sine squared on the denominator. 1 minus sine squared, I know that that equals cosine squared. The numerator is what I want it to be. And by using that tool, I've ended up with a place that makes me happy, which is the left side equals the right side, QED. Um, if they did ask us for non-permissible values in a question like this, or restrictions on the, on the variable, I would need to look again at any denominator that I have and make sure none of those denominators are equal to zero. So in other words, what would make 1 plus sine x equal to zero uh, is if sine x equals negative 1. And so I look at my unit circle and I say, well, that only happens down here at x equals 3 pi over 2. So x cannot equal 3 pi over 2 and then any, you know, 2 pi after that. I also have a denominator of cosine x. So I don't want to let that equal 0 either. I look at my unit circle again and cosine is equal to 0 when x is pi over 2, 3 pi over 2 in any pi after that. So I have those as non-permissive values. Now, the other denominator that I have is something that I introduced, but it's still a denominator nonetheless, a restriction, and 1 minus sine x. So that can't be 0, which means sine x can't equal 1, which means x can't equal pi over 2, and any 2 pi after that. Now, you'll notice these restrictions kind of doubled up, and if I wanted to list them all, I would just say that x can't equal pi over 2 plus pi n, where n is any integer, and that would list all of those restrictions in one, one statement.